I'm Chris Yandek. Today on C Winery, we welcome back University of Nevada, Las Vegas economics professor Stephen Miller. He is the director of research at the Center for Business and Economic Research at the Lee Business School. Professor Miller, it's always a joy to have you on C Winery. How are you today, sir? I'm doing fine. It's good to be with you, Chris. Always nice to talk with you. So, Professor Miller, economically speaking, there seems to be a lot going on right now. You hear reports about low unemployment and how the economy is doing well, but then there are also some opinions among consumers that prices are higher due to inflation and money is not going as far. How would you describe where we are right now? Well, it's an interesting situation. The, the economy is, is doing quite well in many, in many aspects. Uh, the Fed is, is following a policy that, that seems to be working. And the pundits, including myself, uh, I guess the C CBER, my, uh, my center, has been arguing for, for quite a while that a soft landing was in the cards. We were in a vast majority a couple of years ago, but uh, everybody's swinging our way. And now it seems that a soft landing is, is highly possible. Um, of course, that could change on a dime if, if something something happened in the world, in the economy, that uh, caused caused uh, difficulties. Um, in terms of consumers, um, they're supporting the expansion, and it, it traces back to the, the re federal government response to the pandemic when they provided extra unemployment compensation to those that were out of work. It was $600 a week. And if you, if you think about that in terms of hourly rate, 40 hours a week, $600, that's $15 an hour. And that's, that's what many states are, are shooting as a target for the minimum wage. Some have already achieved that. Um, and people are not stupid. They, they saw that the economy was in, in tough straits. So they, they didn't spend that money. They saved as much as they could. And then they found that they were in a situation where they, they could take their time searching for a, another job. And many people decided to reevaluate their, their, uh, their career path and switched. And I think that was particularly acute here in, in Las Vegas. So let me ask you then, you know, looking at it, because you mentioned the soft landing, um, you and the fine folks that you work with at, at UNLV, um, when do you think sometime this year, in the spring, the summer, what do you think we're looking at if that were to occur this year? Well, I think probably the uh, the public is ahead of the Fed. I think the Fed will will start lowering rates, but probably not as quickly as people want. People already want the rates to be coming down. Uh, we see that in some of the uh, forecasts going forward. Uh, but I, I'm a little leery of, of thinking the Fed is going to move too quickly. Uh, they're still pausing, uh, holding the interest rates where they are, because they want to see the, the effects of their previous policy. Monetary policy has long and variable lags, which I'm quoting Milton Friedman here. Um, and they're, they're pausing to see how the, the policy that they've implemented already uh, is having its effect. So far, the, the picture looks pretty good. So, Professor Miller, then let me ask you then. So, of course, we're now in an election year. How is that going to affect the economy, you think? Well, I, I'm not a, a political scientist, and uh, I don't like to make political projections, but I, I can make the following observation, that in the polling data that we see, um, people are, are, not, are not very happy about the economy. And as an economist, we, we sit here and say, they're not happy. Things are, are going pretty good. They could be a lot worse. Uh, and the, the Fed's policy seems to be working. Why, why, why are they still so negative on the economy. And I, my answer is, is because uh, the inflation rate is coming down, but the inflation rate means the rate of increase in prices is coming down. Prices are still going up and people are concerned about the level of prices, not so much the inflation rate. So let me, let me break it down to you like this. As someone who spends their life in academia, works with these data and statistics and reads about this stuff every single day, obviously you're more informed than most people are. And you provide very important information for the general public to understand where things are. Do you think just the biggest problem in general is the disconnect between the average person with the inflation and what the costs are at the grocery store, housing, et cetera, compared to actually how the economy is doing overall? And they're not able to basically separate those into two different things. Well, the problem with that, that view is that uh, it's, a, it's the individual who drives the economy. So 
their their expectations, their their belief about the future is very important for how the economy is going to move. So uh, it should be of some concern that the polling data suggests that the economy is is not doing well. And any anything that the policymakers uh, can do to uh, alter that 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 view of the world would would be beneficial going forward. Uh, you know, it is still possible that we could we could have a recession this next year. Uh, in all likelihood, if we had one, it would be a very minor recession, not not like the last two that we suffered, the Great Recession and the uh, pandemic recession. Uh, so. The, the, the public is crucial for, for what happens in the economy, of course. So here's my question to you. What are your thoughts? Like, what do you want to see happen this year in this presidential election? I'm saying just economically, where do you think that things should be? Is the soft landing the best thing that can happen, in your opinion? Like, what do you think that we're looking at right now? I think uh, the Fed continuing steady as, as you go um, and watching the data as it comes in, I think later in 2024, maybe by mid-year, uh, the Fed will be in a position to make a decision about c c cutting rates a bit. They're going to be under a lot of pressure to do it earlier than they want. And But I, what I hear the, the chairman saying is, is resolve not to do that, but to follow what they think is best for the economy long term, not, not a short term fix. So here's my question to you. So has, speaking of, you know, aside from interest rates, inflation, based on what you have seen in the data, has inflation truly slowed down in a way that the average person feels it yet, or are we not there yet? Well, it depends on what, what we're talking about. So uh, food prices are notoriously volatile, so are energy prices. So gasoline prices are a lot lower than they were a year ago, uh, but they could go back up, of course. Um, and food prices have fluctuated a lot. Egg prices have come down. Um, rental area is an interesting one because in the CPI, which consumer price index that most people are familiar with, is familiar with any price, uh, that, that has a 30 to 40 percent component of uh, rental, rental housing. And when I say rental housing, you have to be careful because a, a large fraction of the population owns their own home. They don't rent. But the, uh, the, the bean counters in D.C., when they do the CPI, they, they impute a rental price on the homeowners. So uh, that rental price uh, is, for homeowners is included in the CPI. And if you think about renting itself, when you're renting an apartment or a condo, it's, you don't own it, but you rent it, you sign a lease for a year and the lease comes up for renewal every 12 months. And so you're locked into a price until the, the lease expiration. What's been happening in, in recent months is that rental prices have been coming down, and but only for those people whose leases have expired. And it takes about 12 months for, for a cycle to cycle in a, a rental decline into the whole economy. I'm not sure that makes perfect sense. Yes, I, I, I think that, I think, yeah, I mean, obviously there's a delay in the data coming through. That's, that's, that's correct. So we should see some improvement in inflation just because rental prices are, are locked in to be, be coming down in the near future. Do you think that that is going to um, also be the factor here in Las Vegas as well? What do you see for Las Vegas in 2024 as well? well I know in Las Vegas we, we have, as in many places in the country, we have a shortage of housing and in fact a shortage of, of lower income housing. Um, and so that market is is uh, pretty tight, which prevents the, the price from dropping too too quickly. Nevertheless, rental prices are, are coming down in, in, in Las Vegas itself. And then what do you see for the entire calendar year in all areas of Las Vegas? Well, it, it does look like a, a, it could be a good year. The, the F1 event was a bang up success, according to the the numbers that have been released. Uh, we got the Super Bowl coming up pretty soon. That 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 should be a big event. Um, so un unless there's some event that occurs that, that cripples travel to Las Vegas, um, Las Vegas should see a, a pretty good year in, in 2024 in our estimation. 
I don't know if you've had a chance to do the research over the years, but just a side question, if you have anything to, to share, maybe you don't, obviously. I mean, you can only work in so many research areas, as you know, time is limited. But how has, in your opinion, the Raiders, the Super Bowl, Formula One racing, the Las Vegas Golden Knights, how has professional sports, in your opinion, impacted Las Vegas over like the last five years? Has this been a huge economic boom to the city, you think? Well, we actually did a white paper at the center on sports economics and entertainment. So it just added a new a new component to the entertainment capital of the world, which is sports sports entertainment. And we we see with F1 and, and uh, the Super Bowl, the NCAA basketball tournament, we have lots of uh, events that occur here in Las Vegas from different uh, leagues that, that uh, have their their final uh competition in in las vegas it's, it's an amazing city and and uh, i mean the the players like to visit here as well the nba uh, summer league has been going for a long time uh, we, we still don't have an nba team and, and there there's some speculation about you know could we get one who who might be the owner and how how might that happen but um, the the golden knights were basically the first entry and and they were a huge success they the attendance at the Raiders games and the Golden Knight games, in, in some cases, it's like the, the the Las Vegas team is the visiting team, not the home team. Yeah, because obviously, you know, you've got people coming to see their team and making a Vegas vacation, but then you get these people here spending money on hotels and travel and, and restaurants and shows and all those other things besides going to the sporting event themselves, which is a very additional aspect to Las Vegas as itself, and I think you'd probably agree with that. That's that's correct, but it, there are a couple of other issues that, that need to be considered. Um there, there still is a need to diversify the uh, Las Vegas economy out of leisure and hospitality. Um, and I think we've seen that on the labor side that there's been a, a, a shift in, in the power uh, equation between management and labor. Labor now has achieved much more power relative to management and has taken some time for management to, to realize this. So we've seen, you know, the, the auto worker strike, the, the strike in Hollywood and uh, the the uh, the uh, culinary union uh, uh, settlement. And they're, they're still working on some of the union uh, aspects here in Las Vegas. That the, the increase in 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 uh, union activity is, is a signal that uh, the unions have gotten more power. So uh, labor has gotten more power in the labor markets. So you, we've heard stories about how businesses have had trouble attracting and keeping uh, workers. And they, the solution is they've had to increase wages and benefits in order to attract people and keep, keep them on, on staff. Um, particularly problem here in Las Vegas because we had such a, such a high dependence on leisure and hospitality. About 25% of our labor force uh, is in, involved in leisure and hospitality. But many of them have decided to move into other areas like warehousing where the, the pay may be better and, and uh, the career opportunities may, may be brighter. And that's sort of a microeconomic problem. Economists call that uh, structural unemployment as opposed to aggregate demand unemployment. Um, and structural unemployment is not responsive significantly to macro policy. It's, you need uh, workforce training and, and uh, uh, ways of, of moving people between job categories that efficiently so that the, uh, the demands and supplies in the various markets can, can uh, balance out. Yeah, so then one other thing and one other point I'll make to you then we'll I'll wrap up with a couple other questions is is that, you know, actor Mark Wahlberg is now living here. He's talking about bringing a, a studio, Hollywood, films, TVs to uh, Las Vegas. Do you think that would be a good expanded entity aside from the hospitality industry? Well, it depends on what what is uh, envisioned. If if it's just movie making, then movie making is is a sporadic activity. So that a lot of people that would that be employed in that in that sector are it's, it's sort of like hit and miss, part time. And people might be actually moving into Las Vegas temporarily to to do a movie. On the other hand, if you talk about a, a uh, headquarters, 
uh, of, of an operation, then you're talking about more substantial effect on the local economy. Yeah, I think that, that that's well said. So what research are you guys currently working on at UNLV? Well, we, we've uh, we finished a project on uh, Southern Nevada, well, Clark County in particular, on complete streets. Do you know what complete streets is about? No, go ahead. Please enlighten me. I'd love to know. Okay. Well, complete streets is a is a is an acronym for uh, designing uh, streets so that they're friendly to everyone. So cars, transit, uh, walking, bicycling. You 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 name your measure of uh, how sense. people get around. You make it safe and convenient for everyone operating on so you have uh, bicycle lanes and uh, protection for uh, individuals who are walking um, and we're we're now we're working on a second project that's related to that in in, the, in southern nevada and in northern nevada so then here's my question to you how do you think the city of las vegas and the surrounding areas of clark county are doing in regards to you know, like I like to do a lot of walking. I can walk miles at a time. I, I don't have a car. I walk to the strip. I walk to the local grocery stores because I'm right here on the west side of the town near the strip. But like just in general, what do you think what do you think the roads look like for pedestrians, for people who have to get around in wheelchairs or other things like that? How are we doing, do you think, as far as streets go overall and the ability for people to access them? Well, I, I would say, and it's not something that we've done at, at our center, but uh, in the medical school, there's a, a group that follows this issue. And and it's not a pretty picture for Las Vegas because our, our major cross streets, uh, not the side streets, but the major cross streets, the speed limits of 45 miles an hour, and of course, people violate that all the time. So we have a lot of problems with uh, pedestrians getting hit, injured, killed. Um, so streets are not that friendly in, friendly in, in Las Vegas. We have a long ways to go in terms of developing complete streets. Oh my we gosh. Start, we I started agree with the you. process. I agree with you. So here's what I'm going to say to you. Somebody again who walks, you know, many miles a week, um, before I cross the street, every time I always look both ways, even when there's, you know, even when I'm allowed to walk as a pedestrian, cars will still go. So you have to pay attention, and I agree with you 100%. You know, there's always a possibility to get in an accident. So I'm overly cautious, but, yeah, there's been a couple close calls, so I can agree with that thought and point. Yeah, but the idea is to redesign the streets so that you take away the – the opportunity for those uh, events to occur. I agree that, that that is absolutely needed. There's a lot of tourists, as you know, walking back and forth down the boulevard at all times. So we're talking people are out and walking all the time. So aside from that, uh, two final questions. Um, where do you see, um, Just let's just talk about um, the year overall when, in regards to inflation. Do you think that, that we are going to continue to see decreases in certain areas? Are things gonna hold steady? Um, or have we seen the worst of it in your opinion? Oh, we've seen the worst of it, and the I think that we shall see the the Fed reach its two percent target in, by the end of this this year. Uh, the only caveat I would have on that is uh, what happens in the energy markets, and if there's a further cuts in energy supplies, then that that could could boost the uh, the uh, the inflation rate. Of course, what the Fed monitors is is the long-term trend in, in inflation, not not short-run perturbation. So that's why they they focus on what's called the core measure, and a core measure of inflation takes out food and energy prices, which tend to be both going up and going down, most volatile components. So by taking out the volatile components, the the Fed focuses on the trend in inflation. Gotcha. And then, what is your message to just anyone in general about? how they should feel about the economy right now, in your opinion? Well, of course, I, I can't put myself in everybody's shoes. Uh, if, if, if somebody's still unemployed and living in a house that they can't sell because they can't afford to sell it, it's not a pretty picture. Um, you know, they may be missing their mortgage payment, maybe looking at foreclosure. Um, Hopefully, there's not too many of those people left in 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 the country, um, but they're still there. I know we have we we have a homeless issue here in in Las Vegas, 
as as we do in many major cities. Um, so watch what you spend. You know, spend on things that you need, not on things that are, are superfluous or luxurious or or items that you'd like to have if you had more money. Um, you know, make sure that you, you have some reserve money available in case of, of a, a blow to your, your income stream. I agree 100%. Um, it's important to have, if you can, you know, three to six months of emergency savings at least. Anything you want in closing about what you guys are doing at UNOV, Professor Miller? Um, well, I, I hate to raise it at the last second, but one, one of the things that's going on at UNLV is trying to figure out how to start the spring semester after the shooting back in, in December. Yeah. That, that, that shooting was in, a, in our building. I was in the building when it happened. And I didn't hear anything. I didn't see anything. Fire alarm went off, and I went down the stairwell with a colleague. But uh, that's created havoc with if trying to open up the, the, uh, the university for the spring semester. Um, well, of course, obviously, C1 Review sends its condolences to those who passed away on that day and anybody else who was obviously emotionally or mentally affected by what happened that day. Um, I'm glad that you're okay, and I'm glad that most of your colleagues are okay, and i um, really sorry about that, Professor Miller. It was obviously, you know, a national story in a moment where Las Vegas came together, and, you know, we at C1 Review always are here. Um, for you guys at UNLV, anything we can do, obviously. What do you think is the resolution? Do you think there's going to be just online schooling this year? Like, what do you see in the cards? Well, it's sort of focused on the, the building that, that uh, the shooting occurred in. Um, I think online classes will be going going in, in some cases, but in-person classes were, were scheduled in many cases. Students had signed up. And you have to be careful about, you know, changing the schedule, you know, within two weeks of the semester beginning. So I, I know the, the administrators have been working diligently trying to figure out how to do this with as minimum of disruption to, uh, to lives and, and school plans. Um, I know that I'm, I'm scheduled to teach and I, I have a class, in-person class that's in another building. But my office is in the, the, the building where the shooting took place, and I, I, I can't access that office at the moment. And you haven't been able to go back since the, since the shooting occurred, correct? No, I've been back twice, but escorted in and out. So it's like they'll, they'll let you in to, to get some uh, items that are important for your work, and then escort you out, and that's it. You have to make an appointment to do that. Well, Professor Moore, thank you so much for updating us. Um, hope you get to have a, as much of a normal semester as you can. Um, I know that your students very much appreciate the great knowledge that you have, and we are always so grateful to have you for a couple of minutes to share the great knowledge that you have about the economy nationally here and Las Vegas as well. So for University of Nevada, Las Vegas professor, Professor Miller, and CY Interview, I'm Chris Shandick. Professor Miller, again, thank you so much for joining us today. Hang on with me. Thank you, Chris. Thank you for watching today's CY interview segment from Las Vegas. Please hit the like button and please hit the subscribe button to be updated on all future CY interview content from Las Vegas and beyond.